Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors are Alpha Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management. Get a replacement car anywhere in Birmingham within one hour. It took a jury 55 minutes to find Shane O'Brien guilty of the murder of Josh Hansen back in 2015. Shane O'Brien became one of the most wanted men in Europe after going on the run for three and a half years. He was originally from Ladbroke Grove. He will be sentenced later this month on Sunday the 11th of October 2015 at quarter to one Josh who works seven days a week as a road planner as it says in the Metropolitan Police statements he had met up with his girlfriend and they went for drinks at the RE bar Field End Road in East Coast Shane who Josh did not know had came to the same bar 15 minutes earlier and was also with friends the only interaction between the two guys as it seems one of Shane's friends briefly spoke to one of Josh's without incident. In actual fact, it looks like they bought him a drink. CCTV showed O'Brien sitting on the sofa at the back of the bar just opposite where Josh was and his girlfriend and their friends. At one minute past one, O'Brien stood up and navigated a table and other people to reach Josh O'Brien. At six foot and powerful, and Josh was only five foot six, it says. He was clearly confused by O'Brien's aggression and did not react. O'Brien said something like, what's your problem? And at this point he put his hand in his pocket and pulled out a standing blade keeping it down by his hip he opened the blade up five seconds later he raised the blade with considerable force slashed it across josh's ear throat and chest causing a 37 centimeter gaping wound and that caused catastrophic injuries before lowering his arm to conceal the weapon again turned away and then walked off purposely towards the door he crossed field End road towards the junction of Mumford Road and got into a small white van driven by his friend that took him to the White City area. Back in the bar, Josh's friends tried to help him and others, including an off-duty nurse, began CPR. The ambulance service was called and they battled to save his life, but he died at 20 to 2 that same night. A murder investigation was launched by DCI McHugh. CCTV was quickly seized, which clearly showed the attack and detectives were able to clearly scan the footage to identify which drinking cups left on tables O'Brien had used that night two were identified and from those fingerprints and DNA recovered that proved the match to O'Brien warrants were executed at addresses he was known to have access to he was not there but there was a number of knives recovered including two Stanley blades a flick knife a machete and a hatchet inquiries revealed after attacking Josh O'Brien left London at around lunchtime on the Sunday the 11th of October he travelled to a holiday park in Canberra Sands in Kent. He had made arrangements while fleeing the scene in a white van. He went to a local pub that same evening with a friend. They returned the following night and the conversation with bar staff O'Brien told them that he was staying at Camper Sands. They then left and went to an Indian restaurant for a meal. CCTV showed that O'Brien was very relaxed and very cool. On Tuesday the 13th of August O'Brien and a friend drove to Ashford Designer Outlet Retail Park in Ashford Kent. Again CCTV TV showed them purchasing clothing and taking a long time to have a look around. They also found them in their VW Golf, the vehicle that was used. He brought a suitcase while he was out shopping and took time to have lunch. On Wednesday, the 14th of October, staff at the pub O'Brien had visited saw the Facebook appeal for £10,000 to trace his whereabouts. They recognised his image, they called the police and officers attended to make further inquiries. However, by then O'Brien had fled. Further inquiries to trace the VW Golf showed it travelled back towards London on Tuesday the 13th of October and then at quarter past one passed very close to Biggin Hill Airport. At three o'clock the same day O'Brien left the country in a privately chartered two engine propelled plane. Air traffic control records show his destination was South East Netherlands near the German and Belgian border. On Thursday, October the 22nd, officers searched the caravan that O'Brien had been staying in at Camper Sands and recovered a khaki Canada goose jacket O'Brien had wore at the RE bar. Josh's blood was on the sleeve as well as O'Brien's DNA. A manhunt began. They were trying to find Shane O'Brien. They used the National Crime Agency. They also used Interpol and Europol. A European arrest warrant was issued in October of 2015. 
O'Brien was put on the most wanted list and rewards for information leading to his arrest were raised to £50,000 over time. Detectives began to piece together his movements. The private plane landed in the Netherlands. O'Brien was refused entry because he didn't have a passport. He, lo- he took an onward journey to Germany where he walked across an airfield and disappeared. This guy is like a magician. He just vanishes ev- everywhere he goes. So that's where they lost track of him again. The detective in charge of the case said he was a wow connected person and they believe he had involvement in the criminal underworld but they never specify what or how on the 21st of march 2019 dci McHugh was contacted by o'brien's solicitor he said that o'brien was considering handing himself in and proposed a meeting in budapest the location was then changed to romania and urgent inquiries began to try to find exactly where o'brien was the romanian authorities were alerted and o'brien detained on the 23rd of march he was on a false danish passport false residence permits and driving license credit cards and various different names and mobile phones o'brien was extradited to the uk arriving at heathrow airport on the 5th of april immediately taken to heathrow police station and charged appearing in court the following day as i said at the beginning 55 minutes they did not know each other at all but looking looking into a bit of the background and the story i was able to find out the dad of josh the victim was a very prolific arm rubber his dad and uncle were called sean and vincent bradish and they they had actually been responsible for up to a million pounds worth of robberies the prosecution in his dad's case actually said he spent half a million on cars drugs and holidays they would hold sawn off shotguns and demand money they attacked thomas cook travel agents on 25 occasions and his dad was actually sentenced to life in prison he came out in 2014 but i believe that he committed several more robberies and he was taken back to prison straight after so he goes to show it must be sad and really hard for his dad to have been in prison while his son lost his life on the outside so my condolences to his father and in regard to shane o'brien there was only one article that was ever said anything about shane o'brien in regard to why he was so able to be able to escape the country so easily shane o'brien was unemployed had no bank account and was believed to have been involved in the drug trade the officer said the man who chartered the plane and accompanied brian to the uk later was convicted of importing 100 kilos of heroin and cocaine with 30 encrypted mobile phones the pilots were convicted in the netherlands of importing 90 kilos of heroin so everybody around him in that flight was actually convicted of drug charges at some point or another down the line so it's a really sad story and also a big lesson to learn and it just goes to show that being on the run can really take its toll on you at the end of the day so my condolences to josh and his family wanted people to see this footage they made it public so i really want to hear what people have to say on this so please don't forget to like comment share and subscribe at www.scarcitystudios.co.uk peace